storytelling. Okay. okay. Good morning, guys. My name is Almananda from Social One, number 30. I want to storytelling right now. Okay. I want to start telling about a boy who with his wolf cry. Oh, the, the boy who cried wolf. Okay. Once upon a time, there lived a shepherd boy who watched a group of the sheep in the near of the village. He shocked out the villager three or four times by screaming out, Wolf! Wolf! And when his neighbors there were there to help him, he laughed for their pains. However, the wolf in the end has really come. The shepherd boy, now really in danger, cried in agony of the terror. Pray, please come here and help me. The wolf is approaching to kill the sheep, but no one paid attention for his cry or provide any, any assistance to help him. The wolf, for no frightening reason, in his spare time, tore or crushed all the sheep in the flock. No liar will be believed even when they are telling the truth. There is no believing liars when they, when they are speak the truth. The moral of the story that I can get is never tell lies because once you speak truth, you never will be believed. Okay, applause. Thank you.
Okay, guys, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Alhamdulillah. Sorry, guys, for the trouble. Okay, Salma. Salma? Yes, ma'am. Okay, you've done with the story, ya? Yeah, yeah ma'am. Okay, guys. Uh, actually, Salma has already mentioned the moral value. But anyone, if you have, uh, you can share your point of view. Yeah, come on. What is it? Anyone from the story, the boy who cried wolf. Anyone knows? Social one, can you find out what is the moral of the story? Okay, Salma, can you repeat once again what is the moral of the story? Yeah, ma'am. Uh, mm -hmm. The moral of the story that I can get is mm -hmm. never tell lies because once you you speak the truth, you never will be believed. Okay, applause for Salma. Thank okay. you. Uh, Lika, please uh, write down the list because uh, okay, ma'am. Missing because from uh, based on the trouble. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Salma. Next for the next performance, please welcome Evelyn. Come on, Evelyn. Okay. Hello, ma'am. Hi. Uh, so today I will I want to tell you about a story. Mm -hmm. The empty pot. The empty the pot. Time, okay. okay. A long time ago in China, there was a boy named Ping who loved flowers. Mm -hmm. Anything he played burst into bloom. Everyone in the kingdom loved flowers. They planted them everywhere and the air smelled like perfume. The emperor loved birds and animals, but flowers most of all. And he tended his own garden every day, but the emperor was very old. He needed to choose a successor to the throne. The next day, a proclamation was issued. All the children in the land were to come to the palace. There, they would be given special flower sheets by the emperor. Whoever can choose me the best in the year's time, he said, will success me to the throne. This news created great excitement throughout the land. Children from all over the country swarmed to the palace to their flower seat. All parents wanted these children to be chosen emperor, and all the children hoped they would be chosen too. When Ping received his seat from the emperor, he was the happiest child of, of all. He was sure he could grow the most beautiful flower. Being filled of flower pot with rich soil. He planted the seed in the air very carefully. He watered it every day. He couldn't wait to see it sprout, grow, and blossom into a beautiful flower. Day after day passed, but nothing grew in his Being was worried. He put a new soil into a bigger pot. Then he transferred the seed into a rich black soil. Another two months he waited. Still nothing happened. By and by, the whole year passed. Spring came, and the old children put on the best clothes to greet the emperor. They rushed to the palace with their beautiful flowers. Injury happened to be chosen. Ping was assigned to be his empty pot. Took that the children would laugh at him because for once he couldn't get a flower. His clever friend ran by holding a great big plate, but but Ping was empty, but his father cheering up. Holding the empty pot in his hands, Ping went straight away to the village. The emperor was looking at the flowers slowly, one by one. How beautiful all the flowers were. But Emperor was frowning and didn't say a word. Finally, he came to Ping. Ping hung his head in shame, expecting to be punished. The Emperor asked him, Why did you bring an empty pot? Ping started to cry and replied, I planted 
to see you give me a and water it every day but it didn't sprout i found it a better pot with a better soul but it didn't sprout i tended it all year long but nothing grew so today i had to bring an epidemic without a flower it was the best i could do when the emperor hear this word a smile slowly spread over his face and he put his arm around me then, ex then he explained to one of all, I have found him. I found the one person worthy to be emperor. Where you get your seed from? I don't know. From the seed I gave you had all been cooked, so it was impossible for any of them to grow. I admire Ping's great courage to appear because of me with an empty truth. And now I reward him with my entire kingdom and make him emperor of all the land. The end. Okay, applause, Evelyn. Yeah, an empty pot. Okay, guys, after listening to the story, can you find out uh, what is the moral of the story? Because you can get extra point. Come on, guys. Anyone else? What is the moral? Yeah, Sekira, what is it? Uh, the moral lesson that I can get from the story yeah. is uh, you should have uh, patience, honesty, and strength uh, within yourself. Very good. Thank you, Kira, for the moral value. Thank you, Evelyn, for the story. Applause for Kira and Evelyn. Okay, next, please welcome angel angel are you here angel are you ready angel okay because angel is not here so please welcome aifa lintang come on lintang aifa aifa are you there yes ma'am okay what are you going to do i'm going uh, storytelling about uh, golden cucumber man. Okay. Yeah, come on, you start. You, you can start now. Once upon a time, lived an old woman named Bo Siri. She lived by herself because her husband had long passed away and she had no children. Every day, she prayed so God would give her a child. One night, when she was praying, a giant pressed her house and heard her pray. Ho, 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 Bo Sirni, I can give you a child with one condition. The giant said to Bo Sirni, You must give the child back to me when it is 17 years old. Bo Sirni was so happy. She didn't think about the risk of losing the child and agreed the giant's offer. The giant then gave her a bunch of the seed cucumber. Plant it around your house. The giant then left without saying anything else. In the next morning, Bosirni plants the seed. No longer after that, a big golden cucumber grew from plants. Carefully, Bosirni pulled the golden cucumber and carried it home. Oh, this golden cucumber, so big and heavy. I was left in with carefully. Oh, such a beautiful baby. Because this comes for the golden cucumber, I will give her name Timun Mas. Years pass by and Timun Mas has grew to become lovely and beautiful girl. She was also smart and kind. Bosini loved her very much, but she kept thinking about the time the giant would take Timon Mas away from her. One night, Bosini had a dream. In order to save Timon Mas from the giant, she had to meet the holy man who lived in Mount Gundu. The next morning, Bo Sirni go to Mount Gundu. 
holy man gave her four little bags, each one containing cucumber seed, needles, salt, and shrimp paste. The mumas can use this to protect herself, said the holy man to Mbo Sirin. A few days later, the giant came to see Mbo Sirin to ask about her promise. Ho ho ho! Mbo Sirni, where is Timun Mas? So the giant. My daughter, take this bag with you. It can save you from the giant. Now, run to the back door, Mbo Sirni said. But the giant saw the Timun Mas running to the woods. He rushed toward Timun Mas. Mbo Sirni tried to stop him, but the giant was unstoppable. The giant was getting closer and closer. So, Timun Mas opened the first bag she got from Bro Sirni with cucumber seeds. She threw the seeds and instantly they grew into large cucumber fields. But the giant ate them all, giving him more strength. The giant was getting closer. Timun Mas took the second bag with needles inside and spilled the content behind her. The needs turned into bamboo trees, sharp and thorny. The giant's body was stretched and bleed. Ah, I get you, Timon Moss, thought the giant as he tried to get himself out the bamboo field. He made it and still chasing Timon Moss. Timon Moss then with the third bag and spilled the salt inside. Instantly, the stalk turned into deep sea. The giant almost drowned, but he can swim across the sea. After some time, he managed to get the water. Timon must saw the giant coming. So, she reached for the last bag. She took the swim pass and threw it. Suddenly, the swim pass became a big swim of boiling water. The giant was trapped in the middle of the swim. Slowly but surely drowned him. Hapless, he roared out. Help! Help! Then the giant drowned and died. Timon Mas then immediately went home. Since then, Timon Mas and Bosini alive happily ever after. Okay, Lintang, thank you very much. Okay, guys, the folklore, yeah, uh, the story about. What is it? Golden cucumber. Okay, anyone knows what is the moral of the story? Me, ma'am. Okay, what's your name? Melita. Melita, what is it? The moral value of this story is don't be greedy and don't underestimate people. Don't be greedy, do not under us, do not underestimate Estimate. others. Okay, thank you Melita, thank you Linta for the story. Applause for both of them. Okay, Angel, are you here with me? Yes, ma'am, I'm sorry. Okay. Come on, Angel, what are you going to do? I'm going to storytelling. Okay, come on. Okay. On cam, please, let me see your face. Can you see me, ma'am? Yeah, okay. Yeah, the story is? Uh, the story is about the story of two goats. Okay. So, good morning, ma'am Lin and my friend. So, today, uh, my name is Tuzma Angelita. I'm saying hey. So, I want to tell you a story about two goats. So here we go. Two goats. Two goats. Oh, two goats. Yeah. Um, over the river, there was a very, very, very narrow bridge. One day, a goat was crossing this bridge. Ba, ba, ba. Just at the middle of the bridge, he met another goat. And there was no room for both of them to pass. Go back, said the one goat to the other. There is no room for both of us to pass. Why should I go back, said 
the other girl. Why should not you go back? <clears throat> ha! I go back. Ha! Because I am stronger than you. So you should go back. Ha! You're not stronger than I. Okay. Let me see about that. And then he put down his horns to fight. Stop! 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 If we fight, we shall both fall into the river and be drowned. Instead, I have a plan. I shall lie down on the bridge and you may walk over me. Then, the wise goat lay down on the bridge and the other goat walked lightly over him. So, they can pass each other and went on their ways happily. So that's the end of the story. Thank you. Okay, a very short story. <laughs> okay, guys. Yeah, anyone knows what is the moral of the story? Uh, two goose. Yeah, what is it? Guys, social one. Okay, uh, can you share us, uh, Angel, what is the moral of the story? Uh, the moral of the story is anger and ego leads to destruction and humility leads to fulfillment. Yeah, anger and anger and what? Ego. Anger and ego lead you to some distract this destruction. Action. Okay, applause for Angel. Yeah. Next, welcome Nurul Ashifa. Come on, Nurul. Hey guys, before we start to the next performance, everyone please on camera because Lika will take the screenshot. Lika, are you ready? Yeah, Ali, Lindat, Nurul, come on, Sela, Lintang, Melati, Shekina, come on, on cam please show your face. And then give your smile, you will get also the point. Come on. Lika, are we on your screen now? There are 36 yes, of us. No, uh, Jawad, Melita. Lagi. Jawad, Melita, guys, on cam. Kira, Evelyn, Salma, Kanaya, Kyo, Ivander, McBrain, Calvin. Yeah, come on, guys. Jawar lagi di luar ngapain Jawar? <laughs> Oke, okay, gimana Lika? Evelyn, Lika? Kiyo, Lala. Evelyn, on cam. Sela, Kira. Udah Jadi, on cam ya? Oke. Okay. Ya, oh, udah. Kira. Okay. Ya, man. Uh, one, two, three. Smile, guys. Sela lagi ya. Oke. Okay. Satu, dua. Yes, ma'am. Oke, okay, thank you, Lika. Don't yeah. forget to uh, create the photo collage and the screenshot, ya. Yeah. Oke. Okay. Nurul, mm -hmm. are you ready? Come on, it's all yours. Ma'am, can you hear my voice? Yeah, you, I can hear your voice clearly. Okay. So, what are you going to do, Nurul? Storytelling okay. about the middle tree. The? The needle tree. The needle, okay. Good morning, everyone. Today, I want a story telling about the needle tree. My name is Nuru Ajifa, mm -hmm. number 26. Okay, guys, listen carefully. Find out what is the moral of the story. Yeah, okay, Nurul. There were once two brothers who lived at the edge of the forest. The elder brother was burning to his younger brother. He ate up all the food and took all his good clothes. One day, the elder brother went into the forest to find some firewood to sell in the market. As he went around chopping a princess of the tree after tree, he came upon a magical tree. The magical tree said to him, Oh, kind sir, Please do not cut my presence. If you spare me, 
I will give you golden apples. The elder brother agreed, but was disappointed with the number of the apple. The tree gave him a great overcame him and threatened it to cut the entire trunk. If the tree didn't give him more apples, the magical tree instead to show even the elder brother hundreds and hundreds of tiny needles. The elder brother lay on the ground crying in the pain as a sun began to lower down the horizon. The younger brother grew worried and went in search of his elder brother. He finds him laying in pain near the tree with hundreds of needles on his body. He rushed to him and removed each needle with painting long. After the finish, the elder brother apologized for treating him badly and promised to be better. The tree saw the change in the elder brother's heart and gave them all the golden apple they could never need. The moral of the story. Yeah, yeah. you have done. Yeah. You don't. You don't have to mention first. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Guys, after listening to the story, what is it? Uh, can you find out the moral of the story? Social one. Okay. Yeah, Nurul. What is it? Moral of this story is. We have to be a kind person for mm -hmm. our family, our sister, our brother, and also uh, another people, and yeah. never be greedy. We must kind to others, people, especially our family, and do not be greedy, yeah? Okay, yeah. Nurul. Thank you, applause for Nurul. Next performance, please welcome Melita, Melita, are you ready? Yes, ma'am. Wait. Uh, you are going to uh, storytelling. Okay. There are stories in wait, social wait. one. Okay. Yeah, you greet your friend. Hi, Hi guys, my name is Melita. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Hi guys, my name is Melita Jenar from 12 Social One, number 19. Now I'm going to storytelling about Little Red Riding Hood. Okay, hey. Little Red Riding Hood. Once upon a time, there was a girl who lived in the village near the forest. Whenever she went out, the little girl wore a red riding cloak. So, Everyone in the village called her Little Red Riding Hood. One morning, Little Red Riding Hood asked her mother if she could go to visit her grandmother as it had been a while since they had seen each other. That's a good idea, her mother said. So they packed a nice basket for Little Red Riding Hood to take to her grandmother. When the basket was ready, the little girl put on her red cloak and kiss her mother goodbye. Remember, go straight to grandma's house, her mother cautioned. Don't dawdle along the way and please don't talk to stranger. The woods are dangerous. Don't worry, mommy, said Little Red Riding Hood. I'll be careful. But when Little Red Riding Hood noticed some lovely flowers in the woods, she forgot her promise to her mother. Little Riding Hood was enjoying the warm summer day so much that she didn't notice a dark shadow approaching out of the forest behind her. Suddenly, the wolf appeared beside her. What are you doing out here, little girl? The wolf asked in a voice as friendly as he could muster. I'm on my way to see my grandma who lives through the forest near the brook. Little Red Riding Hood replied. Then she realized how late she was and quickly excused herself, rushing down the path to her grandma's house. The wolf, in the meantime, took a shortcut. The wolf, little out breath from running, arrived and grandma and knocked lightly at the door. Oh, 
Thank goodness, dear. Come in, come in. I was worried sick that something had happened to you in the forest, said Grandma, thinking that the knock was his granddaughter. The wolf let himself in. Poor Granny didn't have time to say another word before the wolf got her up. A few minutes later, Little Red Riding Hood knocked the door. The wolf jumped into bed and put the cover over his nose. Who, who is it? He called in a voice. It's me, Little Red Riding Hood. Oh, how lovely. You come in, my dear, croaked the wolf. When the little red riding hood entered the little cage, she could scarcely recognize her grandmother. Grandmother, your voice sounds so odd. Is something the matter? She asked. Oh, I just have a touch of cold, said the wolf. But, grandmother, what big ears you have, said the little red riding hood. The better to hear you when, my dear, the re replied the wolf. But, Grandmother, what eyes you have, said the little red riding hood. The better to see you with, my dear, replied the wolf. But, Grandmother, what big teeth you have? The better to eat you with, my dear, wrote the wolf, and he jumped out of the bed and began to chase the girl. Ah! Almost too late, little girl riding hood realized that the person in the bed was not her grandmother, but a hungry wolf. She ran across the room and through the door, shooting, Help! Wolf! As loudly as she could. A woodsman who was chopping loose nearby heard her cry and ran towards the cottage as, as fast as he could. He grabbed the wolf and made him spit out of the poor grandmother who was a bit frazzled but still in one piece. Oh, Grandma, I was so scared, So Little Red Riding Hood. I'll never speak to the stranger or dodo in the forest again. There, there, child. You've learned an important lesson. Thank goodness you showed it loud enough for this kind woodsman to hear you. The woodsman knocked out the wolf and carried him deep into the forest where he wouldn't bother people any longer. Little Red Riding Hood and her grandmother had a nice lunch and a long chat. The end. Oke, okay, oke, okay. yeah. ya. Little Red Riding Hood. Oke, okay, guys, anyone knows what is the moral of the story? Extra point. We Iya, yeah, Wida. Come on, Wida. Um, the moral of the story is children must be obey the parents. Mm -hmm. Children must obey the parents. the parents. Do not talk to strangers, ya. Yeah. Oke, okay, thank you Wida, thank you Melita. Applaus. Oke, okay, next performance. Please welcome Najma. Come on Najma. Wait a minute, ma'am. Najma, uh, you, what you gonna do? Uh, I'm going to tell some stories. Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi. Hello everyone, good morning. My name is Najma Kamira, absent 23, and today I'm gonna tell you guys a story called The Princess and the Frog. Once upon a time, there was a princess. Many a sweeter came to the palace to wear her hand in marriage. But it seems to the princess that each one of them look at her without really seeing her at all. They act like there's nothing more to a princess than her fine crown and royal dresses. One afternoon, after one of these visits, the princess thought, Sometimes, I wish I were little again. And then, she found her favorite ball from the childhood. 
the one that sparkled when she threw it up high to the sun. She took the ball to the palace yard and threw it higher and higher. One time, she threw it extra higher, and when she ran to catch the ball, she tripped on a tree stump. The ball fell and plopped right down into the royal well. Oh no, this is terrible. Just then, a small green frog poked its head above the water. Me? I can help you. Yes, please get my ball. No problem. But first, there's something I must ask of you. Um, what do you mean? It's for you to spend time with me today. What? Um, I'm not sure I know what that means. Just spend time with me today. All right then, fine. Now, please get my ball. I'm on it, said the frog. And he dived well into the well. A few moments later, up he came with the ball. Thank you, said the princess, taking it from him, and she turned to go. Wait a minute, you promised to spend time with me today? I already did, and the princess walked back to the palace. That night, at dinner with her family and the royal advisors, there was a knock on the door. The servant opened the door and saw no one there. The frog standing down low cleared his throat. <clears throat> the princess promised to spend time with me today. So here I am, said the frog and in, in as loud as voice as he could. Doctor, did you promise to spend time with this frog as he claimed? said the king from the end of the table. Um, shut off. Um, mm, very well, come on in. And the servant quickly set a new place setting for the frog, and he hopped over the royal dining table. Conversation turned a topic of concern in the kingdom, and none of the royal advisors knew what to do. Father, if I may, perhaps we could... Stop! I have enough advisors, believe me. Um, <clears throat> if I may, there's more to a princess than her fine crown and royal dresses. And it was the first time he had spoken at the table. The princess stared at the frog. How could this little frog, more than anyone else, understand such a thing? After dinner, the frog bowed to the princess. You have done what you said you would do. I suppose it's time for me to go now. No, wait. How about a walk in the garden? The frog was delighted. The two of them walked in the royal garden. They laughed about many things. Later, when the sun set, they admired the deep recedrets it cast in the sky. The princess said, You know, being with you tonight was a lot more fun than I thought. I had a very good time too. Haha, <laughs> who knew? said the princess with a laugh. And she leaned over and kissed the frog lightly on his cheek. Mwah! At once, there was a puff of clouds and smoke. The small green frog had changed into a young prince. The prince jumped back in surprise. And who could blame her? Years before, an evil witch had put a spell on him that he must stay a frog until he was kissed by a princess. The witch had laughed an evil, an evil laugh, saying, Ha 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 ha, like that will ever happen. But it did. Now, the prince and the princess could get to know each other better. Years later, after they were married, they had a beautiful setting made for the ball 
and place it on the royal dining table. And when the sun let shine in through the palace window, the bowl sparkled for all to see. The end. Okay, applause. Yeah, the frog prince. Come on. What is the moral of the story? Anyone else? Additional point. Come on. Hi, for ma'am. Lintang, Aifa, come on. Uh, the moral value is uh, don't don't judge uh, the book by its cover and uh -huh. never give up to face all of the problem. Okay, don't judge the book by its cover and then what is it? Uh, never give ah uh, don't judge book by its cover and don't give ah uh, bentar <laughs> never give up <laughs> never, never give, give up. up on uh to face all of the problem. Uh, never give up to face uh, that you have in your life. Okay, thank you, Aifa. Thank you, uh, Najma. Applause for both of them. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, next performance, please welcome Nabila. Nabila, what are you going to do? Thank you, Sua. Huh? I will uh, start telling them. You will tell a story? Okay, come on, what is it? Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Nabila Islamia, number 22. Uh, I will start telling about Frozen. Frozen. The king of Andel, and they live two daughters named Elsa and Anna. Mm -hmm. They live happily as a family. Elsa had a magic to fries anything she touched. One day, Elsa and Anna play snow in one of the ballroom in the castle. Then Anna asks Elsa to build her a snowman. Sada! said Elsa while creating a snowman. When they were playing a snow, suddenly Anna slipped, and Elsa wanted to help her by her magic. But her magic accidentally pounded Anna's head. Then Anna fell down and was unconscious. So Elsa brought her to the king to meet the trolls. Anna still can be cured, but unfortunately, her memories about Elsa's power will be removed. Since that accident, the king locked the gate and limited Elsa from people and also hidden her power to all people, including Anna. A few years later, the king and queen died, and the throne was given to Elsa. Anna was very happy because the gate was finally open and she can meet people. At the night dancing party, Anna met Hans. They danced together, and suddenly Hans proposed to her. Anna agreed, but she had to ask to approval of Elsa, the queen. But unfortunately, Elsa didn't approve it. Elsa left Anna and Hans, but Anna tried to stop her and accidentally opened Elsa's glove and she accidentally showed her strength of power to all people in the castle. Elsa tried in to harm anyone, so she decided to run away. Elsa, who fried in, decided to leave the palace and went to a mountain ice. She lived there alone. She even made a hot castle that was made from ice for herself. In the other hand, Anna wanted to find Elsa, so she asked Han to take care of Erendel. In the middle of the trip, she met Christoph and his dear name Sven. Having conversation for a while, Christoph agreed to accompany her to look for her sister. Then they met Olaf the snowman. And then Olaf guided them to meet Elsa. When they met her, Anna asked Elsa to unpraise Arendelle, but Elsa said she couldn't do it, that Elsa explained them. But suddenly, her magic shot Anna's heart. Anna hired 
turned into white and Olaf said that only true love can help it. Then Anna, Kristoff, Sven, then Olaf went back to Arendelle and Anna told Hans the matter, but Hans was a bad guy. He ignored her and he said that he would marry Elsa to control the kingdom of the look Anna in the room. And the, finally, Christoph come back to save Anna because he really loved her. In the other hand, Hans told Elsa that Anna died because of her magic that was hurting Anna's heart. Elsa felt so sad and suddenly the storm in Arendelle stopped. Elsa saw Anna and ran to her and hugged her. Sin was a bad guy. They called him and then Christoph and Anna become a couple and finally they live happily in the kingdom of Arendelle. Okay, applause, yeah. The frozen Elsa and Anna. Okay, guys, anyone knows what is the moral of the story? Anyone? Extra point? Hi, guys. Okay, Bila, what is it from your point of view? The moral, uh, the love of family is always with us. No matter how dreadful we are, uh, okay. the love of family will never fade on us. Okay, Bila, yeah. It's very important to have the love of our family. Thank you, Nabila. Applause. Thank you, Ma. Okay, next, Widat. Widat, storytelling also? Yes, ma'am. Okay. There are, there are so many stories in social one. Ya, Oke, okay, Ma'am. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Today I'm gonna tell you a story about Princess Snow White. Snow White. Come on. Once upon a time, there lived a beautiful princess in very big clothes. She is very beautiful with her blue eyes and long black hair. Her skin is white and smooth, though she was called Snow White. She had a stepmother who was always envious of her beauty. Her stepmother who was always envious Unfears of her beauty. Her stepmother was also beautiful and the magical mirror always said that every day and every time she asked. Mirror on the wall, who is the most beautiful in this world? Her stepmother asked. You are the most beautiful woman in this world, Miss T. The magical mirror answered. One day, the stepmother asked to the magical mirror again, but the answer of the magical mirror met her end. Mirror on the wall, who is the most beautiful in this world? The stepmother asked. My queen, you are beautiful. But Snow White is more beautiful than you, the magical mirror answered. The stepmother was very angry. Then she asked her third servant to bring Snow White to go away from the palace and kill her. However, the servant didn't kill Snow White. He let her go by herself. Please, don't kill me. I will go to the woods and I will not come back again, Snow White said. Go away, poor princess, the servant said. The servant thought that wild animal would eat her and let me Snow White met with her to life and free from the pressure. In the forest, Snow White was alone and afraid. She didn't know where she had to go, but suddenly she saw a small peculiar cottage. He wondered who lived there and then she decided to go inside there. In the cottage, there are seven beds and a kitchen. Snow White was very tired and suddenly she fell asleep in the afternoon. In the afternoon, she, seven of the dwarfs who lived in the hut went home. They were surprised to see a young woman there. One of the dwarfs froze her and asked who she was. Snow White told them her head story. The seven dwarfs also understood her feeling and asked her to stay with them in the cottage. Meanwhile, at the place, the seven went back and told the stepmother that Snow White had been killed. Then the stepmother asked the magical mirror once again, who is the most beautiful in this world? And still magical mirror answered Snow White, who was living in a small cottage with seven dwarfs most beautiful. The stepmother was very angry and she planned something bad for Snow White. Then the stepmother disguised herself as an old woman who sold a bucket of poisonous apples to go to the cottage. In the cottage, Snow White was warned not to open the door to strangers by seven dwarfs. The stepmother finally arrived to, to the cottage and began to bring apples to Snow White. I can open a door and let anyone come in. The seven dwarfs have warned me. 
my wife said, okay, I just want to give you this apple. No, I can't take anything from anyone. Snowat explained. Snowat refused to open the door, but the stepmother continued to persuade. Ultimately, Snowat would open the door and got an apple and then she ate it. Therefore, Snowat was poisonous with an apple filled beside them. In the evening, when, when the seven dwarfs went home, they were surprised. They saw Snowat light on the floor with a pale face and poisonous apple beside them. The seven dwarfs were said to see Snow White was dying. Then the seven dwarfs decided to make bending for Snow White that was made of beautiful crystal to make her alive. Every day, seven dwarfs would wait for miracles, then Snow White would go away. One day, there was a prince of a kingdom who saw a beautiful woman who was light on the bed of a crystal. He was also asking the dwarf to tell what happened and dwarf told, Let me have Snow White and I will give you everything, the prince said. However, the seven dwarfs refused. They didn't want to be separate with Snow White, even though he would pay by gold in this world. I asked really it much because I can live without seeing Snow White. If you agree, I will bring all of you to. I also take you as my brother. Finally, the seven dwarfs agree. Then the prince kissed Snow White to show his attention. Suddenly, Snow White was awake. The fact was that the kiss from the prince broke the evil spell. After that, the prince asked her to get married with him, and Snow White said yes. Since that day, Snow White lived in, in the prince because happily ever after. Okay, applause. Yeah, Snow White. Okay, guys, anyone else? What is the yeah, model? Me, ma'am. Safira. Okay, Safira, what is it? Uh, don't trust people so easily, mm -hmm. especially if they're strangers. D don't uh, trust people easily and then especially if they're strangers especially if they are strangers Najma how about you um, we should never be jealous to someone because kindness and true self comes from the inside okay thank you Najma thank you Safira yeah and then thank you Wida for the time applause for all of them next please welcome shekina glory uh ma'am uh, can i use another uh bisa gak saya pakai perangkat lain soalnya saya pakai video gak pakai ppt mau presentasi okay you are going to tell a story too Yeah, the story is about pre pre presentasi, ma'am. Oh, presentation. Okay, come on. Yeah. Uh, saya share screen, ma'am. Okay. Okay. Happy um, Earth. Yeah. Okay, uh, good morning everyone. Good morning, my friend. Good morning, Mamlin. Morning. Uh, today I want to present about Save the Earth. Okay, uh, here's the reason uh, why I choose because we have to save the earth because we always find a person uh, who doesn't really care about the little thing they have done. It will damage the whole world like a plastic 20 until 1000 years that we have to waste for the rocket plastic. And if it's not, the animal will feel the impact of the plastic. Uh, second one, the Earth doesn't have much time to tolerate our stupidity because if we're continuing these habits, we won't know what it's going to happen. Dead. Kill me. Dead. With, Somebody um, Okay. Uh, second one, it's probably the fish already contaminated with the plastic. Uh, it means the food that we are usually consume are not quite good for our health. Imagine that you are eat a crab that have a top of plastic for the shell. Next, the planet is one big one. It is only part of our galaxy that can support us. Scientists estimate that 
300,000 flight expenses over uh, 600,000 species of meat and about 10 million animal species. I guess you could say we are the life department. Uh, next, uh, our it sport and invisible scale like atmosphere. Uh, it is surrounded by a cloud of gas called the plasma sphere. This could interact with rings of particles that also surround the planet to create an invisible shield like an armor. Uh, this planet is into recycling. Uh, the ground you walk on is recycle it's part of a sizzling hot magma deep within the planet's core this is pushed up to the surface where it cools and becomes hard rocks winds around the rocks saving of tiny fragments that get buried back into the earth where they're reheated into magma next earth is in the perfect position earth spins around a tidal axis or an imaginary line that runs through the planet from the south pole to the north pole if the planet were in guilt and differently, or if Earth were even just a little closer to our father from the sun, temperatures would shift the drastically. And our planet is the mystery. About 95% of the Earth's ocean, which make up more than 70% of the planet, remain unexplored. Scientists estimate almost a million undiscovered species could live in this unseen seas, some lands, like part of the rain of forests in New Guinea are also ancient. This means that many things on Earth have yet to be discovered. And this is our steps, what we have to do to save the planet. It's uh, from the easiest thing. First is how plastic packaging can be reduced. Over the last 10 years, most people will have noticed the unnecessary overuse of plastic in packaging. Uh, we have we also known about the so many advances uh, about the plastic in our lifetime. But there are some things can be taken to reduce uh, plastic packaging. Uh, like cook from raw materials to reduce waste and packaging. Cut the necessary packaging by trying out scoop shops or by from green grocers and delis, uh, like supermarket. Delis is like supermarket. Buy loose leaf tea rather than tea bags. Prepare your own lunch for work or at least uh, last night leftovers. And second one, the effect of plastic cups on the environment. Coffee cups are a huge short of plastic pollution as they contain a plastic paste known as which helps the cup keep your coffee warm but also prevents it from recycle. You can help the environment by using reusable cups rather than plastic or paper. This reuse and reveal model is starting to be employed in supermarkets and cafes. Next, banning plastic bags to save the environment. Progress has been made in plastic usage since the introduction of fees in supermarkets. But abroad, there have been campaigns to ban plastic bags. Several African countries, including Kenya, have banned plastic bags, bags in Thailand. They only use a diesel bowl corn stretch plastic bag in the supermarkets, even away from the tourist areas. And the last, I'm not last. Uh, water. Really make a big difference. Every time you turn off the water while you are brushing your teeth, you're doing something good. You got a leaky faucet, you might be dripping as much as 90 gallons of water down the drain every day. So fix it. It's easy and cheap. And stop drinking bottled water. Switch to filter tap water. You will save a ton of cash and help reduce a ton of plastic waste in the process. Next, use reusable bag. Plastic grocery type bags that get thrown out and in up landfills or in other parts of the environment. This can suffocate animals who get in them or may mistake them for food. Also, it takes a while for the bags to decompose. Whether you are shopping for food, clothes, or bag, use a reusable bag. This cuts down the litter and prevents animals from getting a hold of them. There are even some stores such as the Target, Target in the US, uh, 
Bebas dan over discount uh, for using reusable bags. These bags are useful for things other than shopping as well. I have heard of people using reusable bags when they move. If you forget your bags at home, buy a new one. Better yet, keep a couple bags in your car so you never leave home without them. And last, uh, print as little as necessary. We have all had that teacher that wanted us to have a copy of every single reading when we come to class, or that professor or something like that who wanted a hard copy of the paper are fine, but it seems like they do not understand that using so much paper is detrimental to the environment. What can you do? Uh, ask your teacher if you can bring a laptop or an eraser to class so that you can download the reading onto that on a reading from there. If uh, not, print on both sides of the page to reduce the amount of paper. Uh, used. Thank God. Uh, Today, of it, uh, will change the habit uh, by using the paper. And this is a quote: <laughs> "Earth does not belong to us; we belong to the earth." Uh, okay. Applause, guys. Question related to the presentation about save our earth. Any question? Me, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, Gaby, come on, Gaby. Um, so, Shekina, if you were a government, um, what will you do regarding with saving the earth? Yeah. Uh, oh. oh. Uh, if I were a government, uh, maybe I, w I have to know, depends of the situation that happened in that day. Maybe I will, uh, if that's about the plastic, it becomes a necessary problem in this day. Uh, maybe I will make a law. Uh, it's like use another material, uh, it's a plastic, obviously, uh, into another material, like you can say a metal for, for the straw and polyester for the back. It's good, uh, actually. And maybe if it's not work for the, if it's not work, for the uh, people, for the for the people, for the society, maybe I will adding some. Uh, they have to pay like two million rupiah if the restaurant always use the plastic for the bag or another another stuff they use for for whatever. Okay, so Shekina will. Uh, what is it? We we'll allow the citizen not to use the plastic, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Gabby. Thank you, Shekina. Applause. Thank you, Shekina. Uh, yeah, next performance. Please welcome Aubrey. Aubrey, are you ready? Aubrey? Yes, ma'am. Okay. What are you going to do? Um, I will tell you a story of Goldilocks. Okay, Goldilocks and the three bears. Come on. Once upon a time, there was a little girl named Goldilocks. She went for a walk in the forest. Pretty soon, she came upon a house. She knocked and when no one answered, she walked right in. At the table in the kitchen, there were three bowls of porridge. It consists one large bowl, one medium bowl, and one small bowl. She tastes the porridge from the first bowl. Oh my, this porridge is too hot, she exclaimed. So she tastes the porridge from the second bowl. Ew, this porridge is too cold, she said. And finally, she tastes the last bowl of porridge. Um, it's yummy. This porridge is just right. And she said happily and she ate it all up. After she had eaten the three bears bricks, she decided she was feeling a little tired. So she walked into the living room where she found three chairs. It was a great big wooden chair, a medium pink chair, and a small blue chair. 
Goldilocks sat in the first chair to rest. Oh my, this chair is not comfortable at all, she exclaimed. So she sat in the second chair. This chair is too soft and too squishy, I think, she whined. And she tried the last and smallest chair. Um, I think this chair is just right. Uh, but just as she settled down into the chair, it broke into pieces right under her. Uh, so she was go upstairs to the bedroom where she found three bed three, where she found three bed. She lay down in the first bed, but it was too hard. Then she lay in the second bed, but it was too soft. Then she lay down in the third bed and it was just right. Goldilocks fell asleep. As she was sleeping, the three bears came home. When the bears came home, they were very surprised when see the front door already open. Papa Bear said, It looks like someone has been eating my porridge. And then Mama Bear said, Someone's been eating my porridge too. And the baby bear cried, Someone has definitely been eating my porridge, and they ate it all up. The three bears went into the living room to find out who has been eating their porridge. I think someone been sitting in my chair, growled the papa bear. I think someone been sitting in my chair too, growled mama bear. Someone has definitely been sitting in my chair, and they have broke it into pieces, cried the baby bear. So... They decided to look around some more, and when they got upstairs to the bedroom, Papa Bear growled. Someone's been sleeping in my bed, said Papa Bear. Someone's been sleeping in my bed too, said the Mama Bear. Someone's been sleeping in my bed, and she's still there, exclaimed the Baby Bear. Just then, Goldilocks woke up. She saw the three bears. She screamed, Help! And she jumped up, ran out of the room. Goldilocks ran down the stair, opened the door, and ran away into the forest. She never returned to the home of the three bears, and the three bears never ever see her again. The end. Okay, applause, yeah. Goldilocks and the three bears. Okay, guys, anyone knows what is the moral of the story? Additional point, come on. Goldilocks, very famous story, come on. Social one, you don't want extra point? Okay, uh, Aubrey, what do you think? The moral of the story, can you share us? The moral story of Goldilocks and the Three Bears, uh, mm -hmm. we must not uh, take what is not belong to us because it can mm -hmm. hurt others, especially when the person use or destroy another person mm -hmm. property. Yeah, do not take others belonging. Yeah, it's not a good example. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Aubrey. Applause. Okay, for the last performance, please welcome Lika. Lika, what are you going to do? I will presentation, ma'am. Okay, presentation about what? Uh, Cyberbullying. Cyber bullying. Okay. Uh, yes. Yeah. Guys, please listen to the presentation. Ask question. You will get the point. Yeah. Cyber bullying. Okay. Come on. You can start from now on. Wait, man. Um, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh uh, Good morning my memorian and my friends uh, My name is Masika Tumami of 17 Today I'm going to do presentation about cyberbullying Um, what is cyberbullying? Uh, cyberbullying is when a person use the internet, cell phone, or other technological device to send or post text 
uh, or image intended to hurt, engage, threaten, torment, humiliate, or intimidate their victim. So, uh, cyberbullying is uh, type bully in the social media. Next, uh, how uh, social media affect cyberbullying? Uh, it makes it easier to communicate, uh, meaning it's easier to get in touch with, with someone and bully them. People also post mean things on social media that everyone uh, can see. The words from uh, of bullying can be on social media. Um, why people do cyberbullying? Uh, because uh, angry, jealous, grudge, to find pleasure, to drop a friend, frustrated, uh, have pressure. The example of bullying is include in text message or email, um, rumors sent by email or post on social networking sites, and embracing picture, video, website, or fake profile. Uh, types of cyberbullying. Uh, types of cyberbullying. Uh, there are two types. One is a uh, cyber uh, direct attack. What is direct attack? Their effect is message sent directly to the victim. Uh, the example is instant messaging, blog, website, email picture, email password, internet calling, hacking, or sending spyware. And uh, second uh, type is cyberbullying by proxy. This is using someone else to cyberbully a victim. Uh, this proxy may know they are cyberbullying and they are the form of cyberbullying uh, is very dangerous because many people are involved, but not just the bully and the victim. Uh, and then the example is bullying may hack into the victim's uh, account or uh, steal their password. They might set up a new account uh, pretending to be friends get angry with the victim. Uh, next, effect of uh, cyberbullying. Those who are being bullied, uh, individuals who are bullied can experience negative physical, school, and mental health issues. The effect is uh, depression and anxiety, increased feeling of sadness and lonely, change in sleep and eating patterns, health complaints, uh, depressed academic assessment, and loss of uh, interest. Uh, to enjoy this issue may process into adulthood. Uh, next, affect those who are bullying. Individual who, uh, who bully others can also engage in violent and adultery behaviors into adulthood. The effect is uh, abuse of alcohol and other drugs in adolescence as uh, adults uh, get into fight, vandalize property, and drop out of school. As adults, be abused for their romantic partners, poses, or children as adults. Next, um, we, we must be careful for use the social media so that we don't become the victims. For that we to do uh, to prevent the cyberbullying is uh, stay off uh, under the chat room, cyberbullies look there. If you are verbally abused by one of them, make it look like it uh, no effect on you and make yourself the hacker individual by reporting the case to a person of authority. Be ready to take a screenshot as the, this can be useful to give to someone when reporting the cyberbullying case. Make sure if someone begins cyberbullying, you end the conversation by block of a uh, user. And the last, get rid of cyberbullying. G, uh, go block or delete the person engaging in cyberbullying. E, ensure you keep it, uh, evidence of the bullying. C, tell a trusted adult or friend or report abuse. Uh, e, uh, I, ignore bullying behavior. And D, do online message after saving copies. 
Oke, okay, last I want to say stop uh, eh, to say to stop cyberbullying and be safe. Here, be smart on using social media. Oh, yeah. Thank you for your attention. If I have a question, I just know. Oke. Waalaikumsalam. Ya, guys. Any, Any question related to cyberbullying? Come on. Me, ya. Rafi Fahasna. Come on, Diandra. Lika, what would you do if you became a victim? Um, ya. Yeah. I will speak up to my parents and my family so uh, as not to be uh, so as not to feel alone. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we are going to come back to our family yeah, if there are some problems in our life. Okay. Okay, guys, social one, you've done a great job, yeah. Uh, what is it? Don't forget, yeah, to put to upload, to submit your PowerPoint, your speech, your story to the Google Classroom, ya. Yeah. Next week, ya, yeah, we are going to continue the last performance, ya, yeah. oke. Okay. This is the end of our lesson. See you next week with the last performance. Have a nice day, bye-bye.